years ago, there was a, a prayer pastor uh, that our church had hired. He's since gone back to Korea. And uh, he would look at you and he said, the mornings belong to the Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I got it. So uh, I, I'm much better in the mornings. Apparently, they call these like the algorithms of your body or something. Some people are night people. I'm not. Uh, I'm only up if I have to be up. So, But I am up early in the morning, so. I enjoy mornings. I uh, want to let you know uh, real quickly about our resource table. I did mention last night, it's my 20th year in full-time ministry. Um, God has an incredible sense of humor that um, I'm actually doing what I'm doing right now. Uh, I always thought ministers were sh- very strange people, yeah, especially, um, I, I, I'm normal, actually, uh, especially the traveling ones. Because the ones that used to come to uh, the, the church that I grew up in, they, they would live in RVs. And I would think, whoever wants to live in an RV, that's wrong. Some people, you want to go camping? No. <laughs> like, it's nice. You're out there with nature. I said, that's why God built hotels. <laughs> you can go and then come back to your hotel room, you know. Do you have Wi-Fi? No, I can't come then, you know. But... Um, and a lot of the ones that used to come to my church, they used to, if they had a family, they would dress their kids up all the same, even if they weren't twins. <laughs> and they'd make them sing, even if they couldn't sing. That, that's borderline child abuse, in my opinion. So, but, uh, you know, when you, when you just surrender to God, you just discover things that you never thought existed many times. And so uh, really thankful and planning on going at least another 80. So um, I, I'm planning on living a long life because this is the shortest part of my existence. Yeah. With long life, will he satisfy you? Hey. Do you know, that, you know that Brother Copeland, I think, is 86 years old and he doesn't dye his hair? People think he does, but he does not. He, look, he looks better than some 50-year-old people I know. So, I, you know, so fly a lot. You sit on a plane next to someone. I go, how old are you? I'm thinking, you know, like, they're like 10 years older. I'm 31. I'm like, Jesus, you should stop drinking. You know, <laughs> that is not good for your life. Get some sleep or something. Maybe see an essential oils agent or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, sin does not pay, you know. <laughs> Forgive a few people. <laughs> you look a whole lot better, you know. <laughs> anyway, it's true, right, you know doesn't pay, you know, anyway, I should probably shouldn't tell all my secrets. I saw someone I hadn't seen in years in college. They said, you look great. And I thought, I can't tell you the same. You know, <laughs> you should stop whatever you're doing because it's not working. You know, I, I'm not being, I, you can change. I'm just saying just the sin stuff doesn't work. Yeah. You know, anyway, um, I don't know how I got on that, but um, they put together, they went through uh, our archives and put together uh, six different teachings from over the years. So they call this retro, uh, God of the impossible, confidence in love, spirit of reformation, the Lord's prayer, kingdom of God and faith 101. So it's six DVDs back there. And then uh, we're switching over all of our uh, resources to these little flash drives because nobody's really uh, using CDs anymore. So any CDs back there are all half off any CD series. And then, uh, my two uh, books are also back there, and we went back and did a curriculum for my first book, so that's available, Creation Reborn. So encourage you. Uh, I really believe it would be a, a help to you. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy about books is that um, you can grab uh, in a book form something that's probably taken that person years and years to learn. And uh, for me, I read, I read books over and over again. There's several I've just read over just because I, I, I remember you, you like read it and you're like, I need to do this again because I didn't quite digest all this. And uh, I encourage you just as a disciple of Jesus that um, don't change the subject if God hasn't changed the subject. And there's things that uh, I'm still listening to some teachings from 10 years ago because I remember years ago, Lord said, I was doing a conference with someone. The Lord said, I want you to listen to this guy's teaching. And I've listened to it over and over again. There's another series uh, from a few months ago uh, from a mentor of mine. I've been listening to it over and over again because I, I have to, it's not like you ever get it, but I got to, there's things that you hear in there. And there's things that as you just 
put it inside of you. It just becomes a part of who you are. And a, a big part of stewardship is the ability to govern your heart. And your heart was not meant to, to, have, to have two different appetites. And meaning that uh, you can listen to the word of God, but then if you fill your heart with way other contrary things, and even sometimes things that we don't even see as overtly sinful, but they all, everything carries an impartation. You know, and uh, everybody's being discipled. That's why you saw such a difference even in, you still see a difference in our nation based upon who they're listening to and based upon what information they're feeding themselves with. It, it, it defines their mindset, you know. Um, so and even when you say truthful, th- this is how powerful your belief system is. If you, if you reveal truth to someone who has been taught a different way over and over again, it's really difficult for them to grasp. Like, no, that can't be right. You know, like, it can't be right. No, no, it's right. You know, so I, I could throw out another different examples, but I, I don't want to go into deliverance session right now. So, um, but, you know, anyway, so let's pray. And uh, this is a really good morning. It really is. Thank you for coming. This is a great weekend. Father, we just thank you. Thank you again, God, for uh, the angel of the Lords that are here. Thank you that you've sent them as ministering spirits. Thank you, Lord, that uh, what gets established in this room will go around the world. We thank you for that, that um, it just doesn't leave because it goes in people's hearts, and then it goes everywhere where they go to fulfill that which you've called them to fulfill on the earth. And Lord, I ask that once again that you fill me with the Spirit. You put your words in my mouth. Excuse me. Thank you for bringing me to this place I ask that you uh, glorify your son. Let all the gifts of the Holy Spirit be in operation. Thank you for filling your people afresh, God. Give people ears to hear and eyes to see. Thank you, Lord, that in the last days, you said there would not be a famine for the word of God, but for the hearing of the word. So I just declare that your people are, are, are hearing your word, and it's being sowed on good soil. And we ask again for uh, words from heaven that change the earth. Words from heaven that change earth. Words from heaven change the earth. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, just thank you for even the moving and the operating of the Holy Spirit in this room. Even the the moving of your, your presence. You said you'd baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. So thank you for the fire of God. And I thank you, God, that uh, this group of people, uh, River City Christian Center in this part of North Carolina, that you've stationed them here as uh, a kingdom outpost for the purposes of God. And the Lord says that you are in a season, and I'm giving you a baton. And uh, it's a baton to build and build for future generations. Even right now, the Lord says, I'm giving you divine instructions. I'm giving the leadership team divine instructions to build and to uh, establish things that will live past their generation. And so the Lord says that the foundation has been built in these years, and you're entering a new season of building for the next generation. For what I called to establish here, and when I called this house to establish, and this group of people to be established, I called it to be a generational house. And so the Lord says, I'm going to hold you responsible for building things for the next generation of your children's children. I'm calling you to establish environments and establish ministries that would last the long haul. I'm calling you to have a global vision for the purposes of God. But the Lord says, remember, there is this call to build for future generations, even as David built for future generations. I'm calling you to build for future generations. And I just see this um, really big, it's like a silver, and it's just silver baton, like runners handed to it. It's like right in the middle of the sanctuary. And so the Lord says, always live with the responsibility that you're, you are building a world that 
you will not live in, but that you'll see from a different place. In Jesus' name. That's a good place to start this morning. Got some water on my iPad. Now it's everywhere. You're saying amen because I got water on my iPad? But <laughs> I want to kind of go back into, I felt from the Lord to go back into what we touched on last night. And obviously, just three sessions, this is a vast subject that we can't touch all of. But last night, we began to talk about the subject of the kingdom of God. And if you saw just in how the Lord led us last night or led me, that we'll, we would jump from old and you because uh, you'll all, always see an interconnection. Uh, Dick Rubin, who went to be with the Lord, uh, had this phrase that always stuck out to me. He said, when the pattern is right, the glory always comes. And he would talk about the patterns in scripture. And so you'll always see a type and shadow in the old that is played, you'll see it in the old, and then it's played out in the new in a very real way. And uh, G, the, the introduction of, of Jesus begins even in the old. So we want to start here again, Matthew 13, 52. <clears throat> I'm reading out of the voice translation. Every scribe and teacher of the law who has become a student of the ways of the kingdom is like the head of a household who brings out some new things and some old things, both out of the storeroom. So uh, we said last night that when time began, God came to establish uh, the kingdom of God, not a religion called Christianity. And we define the kingdom of God as the rule and the reign of God. And we said that the kingdom of God was a creation of God himself. And the kingdom of God in creation expresses the nature of God. And we saw that God created both heaven and earth and uh, heaven became this, uh, the creation of heaven and earth carried the attributes of God and the same attributes that were in heaven were on the earth in original creation. We also said that since God, since God created the kingdom of God and because the, 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 the kingdom of God was supposed to run the world, that everything that humanity desires does not originate in the earth, but originates with God. So what humanity really desires does not exist in the earth unless it comes through the hearts of men and women on the earth. Amen. And also one of the things that we also mentioned about, uh, or one of the characteristics about heaven is that God is accompanied in heaven with his angels and he executes his commands. You can look that up later in Genesis 21, 17, Genesis 22, 11, Matthew 18, 10. And there's a heavenly tribunal and uh, there is this interconnectedness that God desired between heaven and earth and between what we can see with their natural eyes and what we, we're, we're meant to perceive with the eyes of our heart. And there's always, there, God has always intended there to be this interaction between the seen and the unseen world. Well, one of the ways that this is challenging for us often because we obviously get born again and come into the kingdom of God is that we have been trained to think one-dimensionally. The world system is built on what you can see, feel, and think. And those are not wrong in one dimension. They just don't tell the whole picture. If you, if you are simply constantly moved by what you see, feel, and think, then you will live a very limited life. That's why it's really important to emphasize this. God was never me meant to be understood and experienced simply through your intellect. He's not opposed to your intellect. He gave you a brain. That, uh, to me, that was one of, uh, and it's easy for me to say because I have, I have uh, a, I'm a little further down the line in understanding in a sense, but, but may, I, I, the early spirit-filled people, they, they kind of downplayed the intellect. And uh, in fact, one of the, the, the breakthrough things that happened when Oral Roberts, God told him to build that university is that... Uh, he had to get over the bias and the ignorance of most spirit-filled people. And in fact, one of the first uh, marketing lines for Oral Roberts University, because they just thought, you just need the anointing. 
<laughs> you know, and, and there's a truth to that. There's always a little truth, but sometimes it's not the whole truth. And it doesn't mean that higher education is for everyone. I don't believe everyone needs to go to college. But the point in saying that, there, there was a bias in how they thought. And also, there was a, a further bias in the way they viewed the world because they believed that Jesus was coming at any time. And why would you spend your time four years going to college and study? Right. And it robbed a generation of people. I know friends of mine who had passions, and some of them wanted to be uh, college professors and stuff, and the people that mentored them said, don't spend your time on that because Jesus is coming at any time. There's a particular church I know, and it's, 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 a, it's a great place, and they were running out of space in the building that they were in, and this is years ago, maybe 20 years ago, and the elders decided, we don't want to be in a building project if Jesus comes back. They still don't have another building. <laughs> and so, not saying that you need to build another building, but these sort of mindsets will hinder you often. So the, 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 uh, the, the first marketing line for Oral Roberts is, Oral Roberts University, come get your learning and keep your burning. You don't realize how far we've come as spirit-filled people. Because someone pioneered that truth in the earth that it was important to, to train the mind and train the spirit. But your intellect was never meant to define your experience with God. And that's why some people, uh, that when difficulty or challenges come or, or an idea about God that they had, uh, something happens in their life that's contrary to that idea, they can get talked out of the will of God because their connection to God is through their mind, not their not a deep-seated revelation of who God is for them. So I don't know how we got on that. But here's how Paul said it, this, this interface between heaven and earth. This is Paul speaking in Ephesians 1, uh, ver verse 7. In, who, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, Ephesians 1, verse 7. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the full, fullness of time, listen to this, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together one in all things in Christ, both of which are in heaven and which are in the earth in him. So he says part of the reason that Jesus came is he came to connect heaven and earth as one. That's why he, may, he says to us as believers right now, not in a future place, that you are seated in heavenly places. So heaven was this created place where God set up, in a sense, the headquarters of his kingdom, and then he gave man dominion in the earth. And we saw that God desired a family in the earth, and he desired, obviously, male and female. And we saw also that everything, that, um, everything on the earth was given a purpose, and that uh, one of the characteristics we saw that man, uh, you know, we, we know that currency and money is, 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 a, uh, is uh, a human creation. And we, we saw that when, as believers or as kingdom people, that we are to work from a place of uh, uh, work from a place of purpose, not for money, and that when we work out in our purpose, money will come to us, and that everything in the earth was created for purpose. There's not anything that exists that doesn't have a purpose without God. I also want you to see something else I didn't mention last night. Everything in creation, everything that you see on the earth was created by God. The enemy cannot create. So when you see things, they are simply distortions of what the enemy has done with something that God created. And where the people of God don't take the authority that God has given them in their place of influence, the nations of the earth suffer. Very important. Years ago, um, the heads of Christian universities wrote letters to uh, 
excuse me, the, 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 as Christian universities were being established, the head of Hollywood Studios wrote letters to the heads of Christian universities said, please send us your best and your brightest because we would like them, we would like to have them to help us shape movies and different things that were coming out. And again, at the time, the Christian presence thought, you know, that's, that's secular, that's ungodly. You know that uh, when the TV came out, many, especially spirit-filled people, they called it a tool of the devil because yeah. right. it was different. I don't say that in a critical way. I don't know what I would have thought about it back then. But they lost an opportunity to use the medium of media to influence the world. And we see how powerful media is right now. Think about how the enemy made a stronghold of that place. He took ownership of that sphere of influence in the world. And then he told believers, you should stay poor and then he made it really expensive to get onto that mountain. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Think about it. He's pretty strategic. He's like, okay, I'll take that mountain if you don't want it. I'll influence a whole generation of people through it. And then I'll tell you you're supposed to be poor. And then I'll tell, the pe- then, then I'll tell half the body of Christ, those people trying to get on that medium to spread the gospel are bad because they believe money's, they need money to do it. We got some problems there. We don't think like God. So we saw, here's some, we saw the interaction between humanity and the kingdom of God. We saw that man was made in the image of God, which simply means he was given the character of God. And from being given the image of God, he was given governing power and stewardship of the earth. And we closed last night by just looking at uh, a, a, a few ways that uh, uh, th- this was supposed to, the interaction between God and humanity and the earth was supposed to uh, uh, operate. We saw, number one, that uh, when man was created, that his, he had a choice, and that choice was, though, but he, he was created with a free choice, but he actually was created to be completely dependent upon God. You, you were created a certain way, but you still have the choice on if you're going to choose God's best for your life. But the most natural state for Adam was to choose to trust God. And we saw that one of the things I remarked on last night was that we see this difference now that often the lens by which we relate to God is like, oh no, if I submit to God, it's really bad. Not realizing that full freedom is in submission to God. And you get to follow God when God asks you to do a new thing or God wants you to accelerate something you're already doing that's stretching and that's difficult. And also, uh, we'll note that. Just because you've never done it before doesn't mean that God didn't ask you to do it. And just because it's really difficult or hard doesn't mean God didn't ask you to do it. Just because it's going to be time consuming doesn't mean God didn't ask you to do it. God's asked me to do many things. Like, I don't know if you realize I'm busy working for you. (laughs) Do you want to kill me? And then I just flipped it. I would probably, I would, what's going to kill me is not doing what he told me to do. That's what's going to kill me. Got to look at it a different way. It's also Truthfully told, the path of a true disciple is a path of inconvenience. It will inconvenience you to get up early to meet somebody. It will inconvenience you to bring another child in your house. It will inconvenience, all these things are not convenient things. The true path of discipleship and the true path of the kingdom is inconvenience. Our governance has always been built. The governing power that God gave to humanity was based upon the character and the nature of God. And God's given you this choice. Even though you're, you're, um, you're, 
your greatest joy was always in to surrender to God. Adam created in his original state was created to surrender to God in all things. And the beautiful thing about Adam was when he was created, he was never created to meet his own needs. You were never created to meet your own needs. You were never created to take care of yourself. That's good news. Thank you.